All right, it's 3.15, let's get started. I hope everybody can hear me clearly in the back, all the way, yeah, that's good, great. Thank you everybody for coming over. Uh, I'm making this presentation today and I'll be making the same exact presentation tomorrow as well at 10.15 a.m. in the morning in the main hall. So uh, today is gonna be a little bit longer, 15 minutes longer, 45 minutes total today versus tomorrow is gonna be 30 minutes. We have a lot of material to cover, and just to give you some background, uh, first I'm going to walk you through exactly what is it that we do, we are, uh, what, where the foundation comes from, what is it that we do, and how we help our clients make money in the stock market. And then I'm going to show you the process of the, that we go through to figure out trade ideas, and then I have two trade ideas for you to take home today with you that you can execute. And if you can just catch the market just enough time, you can probably execute them today before the market closes. It's about, what, 3 o'clock, 3.15? In New York Stock Exchange, we have 45 minutes to get there, all right? Okay, so let's get started. My name is Fahad Khalid. I'm the Chief Investment Officer at Jaguar Analytics. A quick background about myself. I have a bachelor's and a master's from Michigan State University. After graduation, I went to work in Deloitte & Touche in Chicago. I'm sure some of you or many of you are familiar with that accounting firm. Uh, only a couple years there, and then I realized that accounting wasn't going to be my long-term gig. I had to move on to better, more important things in life. So, uh, make a story short, uh, there was a moment uh, when I was sitting down with the controller of this plant in Waukesha, Wisconsin, uh, who wanted us to do fixed asset count. And so I helped him create all the procedures necessary, the internal controls necessary to help him do the fixed asset count. And uh, turned out that later on I got in trouble because as an auditor, I'm not supposed to advise the client how to create internal controls and then go audit those internal controls. As you can see, there's a conflict of interest there, right? That was a moment for me, and then I decided at that point to voluntarily quit my job and move on to better, more important things. So I uh, went and joined first Conway and McKenzie, and after that, Alvarez and Marcel. Alvarez and Marcel is the second largest uh, management consulting firm in the U.S. We are restructuring, turnaround consulting firm, basically helping financially distressed companies. Spent many years there, and those were the years that were my building years. That's where I learned the most in terms of my career and what prepared me for what I became today. And as, as a management consultant there at a and we used to call ourselves, we were doctors to sick companies. So you have basically companies that are financially distressed, you know, up to two, three billion dollars in market capitalization, too much debt, operationally doing horribly, so we would go into these companies, we'll sit down with top management, and we'll try to figure out how we can fix things up. Sometimes that required debt financing, working with the bank. Sometimes that required operationally changing things, like closing some plans, firing people, and just basically disposing off underperforming assets, so on and so on. So a lot of critical, important decision making. I sat on some of the biggest important um, restructuring engagements such as Blockbuster, bankruptcy, um, Virtus Communication, Goodell Baking, and some, there were a total of 11 different clients that I worked on over those years. Traveled a lot for all those years as well. There came a moment for me when two things happened. One, you know, all those years when I was in college and then I was in Deloitte and then I was a management consultant, I was always trading in the stock market all those years on the side. That's where my passion was, trading the markets. Always had money in the market. I bought my first stock, which was Priceline, back in 1998. And I traded it during those bubble years when I was a sophomore in college. And so the market got beaten up so badly in 2008 that I made a drastic career decision at that particular point. And I said, I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing. So I quit my high-paying management consulting job voluntarily, and I jumped into the stock market with both feet in. All my money, all the savings, everything else. 
and that was in 2008, right in the, at the end of the crash. In fact, I also invested quite a bit at that time in some real estate that was also very, very depressed, just taking advantage of the market opportunities that existed at that point. Also, within a year after that, in 2010, I wrote a business plan and I sent it to Option Monster. How many of you are familiar with Option Monster? Right, so I, I wrote a business plan and I sent it to Pete Nigerian and John Nigerian of Option Monster and I said in 2010, um, I'd like to start a subscription service on your website in which 100% of the content, the research, the trade ideas will be my responsibility and your responsibility will be to go sell it. So they had never brought an outsider in, but they gave me a shot. After a couple of meetings, we struck out a deal, we signed the business partnership, and there started a new line of work for me in 2010. We called that subscription service Open Order Pro. That's what you see in the fourth line over there, starting from 2010. We went from zero subscribers to the fastest, highest grossing service on Option Master website within four years after that. It's simply because the fact the performance was there, the trade ideas were great, and the clients loved us. And, and then in 2014, the company was sold to Options House. And then in 2016, Options House was sold to E-Trade. So at that particular point, I had new bosses, new people, and it was time for me to move on and basically go on my own 100%. So at that point in 2016, I started on my own Jaguar Analytics with my friend, with my partner that's in the back somewhere, the CEO, Tom Joy. He's in the back somewhere. So here we are in 2016. A lot of our clients that were there in Option Monster, they came over to Jaguar Analytics and they're still with us. Average client has been with us for 3.7 years and they continue to enjoy and they continue to have fun in the markets with us with all the research and the trade ideas we provide to them. So, and here we are. That's just a little bit of the background of what we do. Now, Jaguar Analytics is a specialty equity research firm. So take a look at us in the sense that we do nothing but just research stocks, plain and simple, like the way it was always meant to be. We don't have a software. We don't have algorithms. We're not asset managers. We don't take anyone's money. We're not a broker. We don't charge commissions. None of that. We simply research stocks like the way it was done 100 years ago, like the way it was done 50 years ago, like the way it's supposed to be done today, you know? Um, so that's what we do. We just study and research these stocks from SEC filings, from management commentary, for almost everything you can possibly imagine. And then based on our research, we make recommendations to our subscribers, to our clients, what to invest in, what to buy, when to buy, and when to sell, those things. And we sell that as a subscription service, and there are two different kinds of subscription services on the website that I'll dive into deep later. But here's a key point, what separates us from everybody else. Every single investment advice, a trade advice that I give to my clients is based on these three critical vetting processes. The first one is the fundamentals. Now repeat after me when I tell you this, because you're going to see me walk you through examples of this. The fundamentals tell us what to buy. I have a great stock for you. It's going to do so well. It's going to grow so much. The company is doing this or that. All those things. The fundamentals tell us what to buy. But on its own, it's not enough. Because a great stock, a great idea, but it's not going anywhere. It's not moving. Nobody else is buying. So what's the point, right? That's alone on its own is not enough. That's the second process right there, technicals. Technicals tell us when to buy. So now you have a great idea, which is what to buy. That's the fundamental part. Technicals, now you have a great idea when to buy. Now you're following the technicals to tell you when to enter, when to exit, where the supports are, where the resistances are, and all those things on the charts. And the third is unusual option activity. And that tells you how to buy. Or put it differently, that tells you if anybody else is buying or you're the only one alone in the house. 
You see, when there's a large thrust of buying by institutions in the market, that creates a pressure underneath the stock. It moves the market. It moves the stock. Knowing how the big boys are positioning in the market in certain stocks and sectors, the buying posts, their buying calls, how directionally they're being positioned and having that data available to you gives you a tremendous amount of information. It improves your conviction level. Let's put it that way. So the fundamentals tell us what to buy. Technicals tell us when to buy. And the option activity tell us how to buy. It's only when all these three critical ingredients come together in a beautiful package, you have a high conviction idea to go in and get into the trade. So every single trade idea that we put out in front of clients follows this exact same three vetting process. That's how we identify opportunities and we tell our clients when it's time to enter into a position. So let's walk through an example. Canada Goose. How many of you are familiar with this? You're all from Canada, right? Here you go. Everybody should know about Canada Goose. Okay, Canada Goose was one of our top picks in the quarterly outlook that was issued uh, in the fourth quarter of 2017. So we're going back now to end of September 2017 when the stock was trading at 30 some dollars and change. That's when we made this as a top pick in the apparel category. We recommended everybody buy call options at that point and buy the stock. Many of, of our clients jumped in. Since then, we have refreshed our bull case multiple times because consistently we see this company performing better and better and better. And there's still tremendous amount of room to grow for this company, including our most recent research. So the research that I want to highlight over here is the one that we presented on June 11th when we refreshed the bull case for our clients. We saw three things on our research that convinced us that the upcoming earnings report is going to be an absolute blockbuster, which was coming on June 15th, and this was on June 11th. I'm going to dive through what those, what those fundamental bull cases are in just a minute. But more importantly, in the high level, we saw colder and the longer winter was benefiting the sales trends. We saw e-commerce trends were picking up. And three, we saw the company was signing major partnerships for distribution, which have, yet, by the way, yet to materialize, they were doing those partnerships in China with Alibaba as well as opening stores in Beijing and Shanghai. Okay? Technical, the second piece. So that fundamental part told us what to buy. That was on June 11th. Technicals tell us when to buy. So we saw a technical setup that was making higher highs and higher lows on increasing amount of volume. The pressure was building behind the stock. So we knew that the stock was going to run. And the third, unusual option activity. Four days before the earnings came out, we saw somebody put $120,000 buying speculative, slightly out of money call options going into earnings. The June 50 calls were bought for 60 cents. Now let's dive into the fundamental case over here real quick. This is a live example that I'm telling you of how we traded this thing. So that's an exact comment that was in my two page write up. This is just one of the paragraph that was sent to all the clients and this is one of those comments that was sent. We talked about colder and longer winter. We talked about how the temperatures in the January and February were running about five degrees above the normal. We talked about how the company did not have enough presence with only 2% market penetration in major markets such as Colorado versus New York with 36% market penetration and awareness. So there were pockets where they could basically make a big difference. So based on all of those things, we decided, we agreed that we said, believe, we believe this boats positively for the high-priced parkas sale. These are very expensive coats that cost like two grand or something. All right? So this is the chart that we put up in front of everybody. Not going to go to the detail, but simply, simply note that the, the left one is January, the right one is February, and in both cases, you can see the dark blue shade tells you that the temperatures were running about five degrees above the average. That's how cold the United States was those two months. That means more coat sales, more everything else. So that was our channel checks. Based on all of this, this is what we saw then the, then the second piece of the bull case. The company announced in May that it was going to make a large expansion in Hong Kong. 
Immediately after that, on in the, at the end of May, the company also announced that they're going to store, make a, make a new opening of the store in Shanghai in October and Beijing in November. Now, both of these stores have not opened yet. The plans are still put in place. That's why we believe the stock is still good here even now. But most important element was when the company announced a partnership with Alibaba's Tmall. Tmall is a massive marketplace of online goods owned by Alibaba in China. They announced that partnership in May, and that is also not gone into effect yet. It's going to begin in October, and I believe fiscal year 2019 earnings will take off after that. So there's a lot of growth drivers that have yet to come into play. So these are just some added comments from my write-up that was sent to the clients. Last thing, just to add to more stuff to how the future looks bright for the company. We talked about China and Europe news stores. We talked about e-commerce e trends gaining more tractions. Five new stores opening in, in the fall in North America. The new, the new manufacturing facility in Winnipeg actually opened this week on Tuesday. And today, this morning, the company opened a new store in New Jersey with a big cold room built in. So when people come in, they actually literally go into this cold room and they get to try the code to see actually how it feels like in the, in the middle of winter. That store just opened today in New Jersey. All right, so they're preparing themselves from a very, for a very strong shopping season. This is a chart that we put up in front of everybody. Remember, this is an example from June 11th. You see how the chart was making on June 11 higher highs and higher lows? So at that point, we recommended everybody that this is, this is going to blast higher and we expect very strong earnings, and that's exactly what happened. The earnings came out and the stock shot up huge. Now since then, after that huge gap higher, the stock has gone into a consolidation period. I'll come back to this chart in just a moment, but the message here on this chart right now technically is that it is once again setting up for a breakout. You see that inverse head and shoulder formation on the right hand side? How many of you know inverse head and shoulder formation? There you go. That is your head, that is your shoulder, that is your left shoulder, right shoulder, and the head in the middle. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? So that is your inverse head and shoulder formation right there, and I believe the stock is setting up for once again another breakout, okay? This is the unusual call option activity we saw five, four days before the earnings came out. So somebody was buying up all these June 50 calls with lots of orders coming in nonstop. They first came in in the morning, and then eight minutes before the market closed, it came back again and they bought even more. Then the earnings came out, and what a quarter that was. Take a look at that, just skimming through, skipping through some of the details here, but revenue was 124 Canadian dollars, 124 million Canadian dollars versus 77 million dollars estimate. That's a massive blowout quarter from Canada Goose. This was on June 15. The direct the DTC revenue, the last line there, up 121% year over year. But it only gets better from here because that's why I highlighted that line at the bottom when they said that as we make significant strategic investments in infrastructure and people to support a foundation for enduring growth, and what it really means is they're highlighting that there's a part about the growth that has not materialized yet that has to do with international expansion, mainly China and Europe. So that's why we believe that this thing still has more to run. So those June 50 calls that the traders were buying for 65 cents, they were going for nine bucks after the earnings came out. They shot up through the roof. Now, a lot of our clients, you know, they position it differently. Some bought straight calls, some did vertical spreads. We discussed this in the chat room nonstop. Some did different kinds of structure, but there were a lot of clients in the chat room that jumped into it based on the analysis and they profited from it. Here's a chart once again. I just wanted to put it out one more time because put it on your watch list. If this thing breaks out through, let's call it $50.50 even, or let's, no, six, what is $60, $62.50, I should say. I'm having a hard time seeing from here. Um, that's a breakout from the downtrend resistance, and I believe at that point it's going to run to 70 plus. So add this to your watch list. Some of the other recently issued trade ideas that we have. 
Roku was a big winner for us. This was only like a couple weeks ago. Dexcom, which is launching a big diabetes. The diabetes of how you monitor diabetes is changing. In case if you guys don't know, there's a big bull market in diabetes right now. Okay, and what is a bull market? In old days, people used to draw their blood from their finger to put it on this little thing to test the diabetic level, to test their sugar level. It's going away. Nobody's going to use that anymore in the future. The future is you take this little patch, you put it on your body, which connects to your cell phone, and your cell phone in real time always monitors and tells you what your sugar level is. That's it. It's very simple. No drawing of blood. Now, there are two companies that are benefiting from it. One is Abbott Labs, which we currently own call options, by the way, and Dexcom. Dexcom is the pure play on that. That stock is so hot, it just continues to run. We made, made a killing on this recently because the company launched G6, which is the newest model of this, of this uh, patch that puts on your body and it helps you basically monitor your sugar levels. Star Surgical, major, major expansions coming in the international market. This has been a beautiful stock for us up almost 200% since basically in the two-month period since we started talking about it. Cyrus One, another one that's a, that's a digital REIT. Uh, pure storage, we bought call options on this going into earnings based on the analysis that shows that the money is going away from hard disk drives to all flash arrays in the, in the data center business. That was great for us. Dave & Buster's major VR launch is happening around the country in the United States with a partnership from Microsoft, Greenbuyer Companies, that's a railroad companies, Play X, that's another great one. This has to do with the casino growth um, and the spending cycle, the CapEx cycle that is benefiting the machinery. Funko, that has been a great product when, the, when Toys R Us filed bankruptcy, Funko took off. There was a big bull story behind this. We benefited from that. We presented a huge big bull case. When the Toys R Us went down, stock just took off Funko, and it went on for two months nonstop running. Also, it benefited tremendously from, um, uh, from having toys and whatnot for Fortnite. You know Fortnite? Anybody plays here Fortnite? I don't play games. I don't have time for games, but I'm sure some of you guys know Fortnite. So Funko benefited from that too. Cardiovascular system, CSII, major launch is happening in Japan right now. This stock is benefiting from that. And then most recently, Walmart as well. We presented a bullish trade in Walmart. Walmart, by the way, bought the largest e-commerce uh, company in India. And I believe long term is going to be Flipkart is the name. And I think long term is going to be very, very beneficial for Walmart. Walmart actually beat out Amazon to outbid Amazon to buy Flipkart in India. Flipkart is the largest e-commerce uh, uh, channel in India. All right, so nine years of performance record starting from Option Master Days, 1,400 trade ideas, average profit per trade 34.6%, average holding period 47 days, Winning percentage, 72%. Losing percentage, 28 You will have win uh, losers. Let me be very clear about this. Everybody has losers. Anybody that tells you they don't, they're simply lying to you. Okay? Even when we follow strictly our three-prong approach to extract these trade ideas, you will have losers. Okay? So this is our long-term winning to win to loss ratio, whether you look at last six months, one year, two year, five year, ten years, nine year, the whole period. This is, if you click on those links, they will tell you, they will take you to an ex, to a PDF file that will show you the entire list of all the trade ideas we have published in 2016 and 2017. 2016 was 110 and 2017 was like 155 some trade ideas or something like that. Okay. Um, here's a performance of 2016, up 117, portfolio up 117%. Performance of 2017, up 217 some percent. And here is 2018 so far. Flattish a little bit for the last couple of months. Market has been a bit volatile, but generally speaking is still beating it very healthy, up about 55 some percent. Quickly gonna walk you through all of this, uh, some quick features. So you get basically two to three, pre, uh, about three on average, trade ideas, pro trade ideas from me, like the example that we just walked through. Um, the, the, the example that just was walked through, the same way, three, three prong setup and everything, you're gonna get three trade ideas like this from me every single week. So here's an example of Dave and Busters. 
YouTube channel, a lot of content is put out over there all the time. Jaguar live chat room, this is where you will find me every day before the market opens until after the market closes. So this is where you'll find me and the rest of the research team. Morning first read, this goes out at 8.30 in the morning. This, this is basically preparing you for the day. Tons and tons of information in this about the day. Weekend research, some of her fabulous research comes out on Sunday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You get it in your email, and it's got two to three, some really good trade ideas that you can trade upon immediately. Some really good detailed fundamental research and technical research comes out here. Um, activity tracker, this is where a lot of the unusual call option activities are recorded. It's a very interesting tool because you just go to the website, you enter the ticker, and it will tell you all the history of major option activities that have taken place on that stock in the last two years. And then you can click on my notes or chart and then just basically see everything that you need to see. Webinar, I do two webinars per week. So this is what they look like. You can join in the webinar, an hour, hour and a half long webinar. Tons of information there, ideas over there. Jaguar income, this, this also goes out on Sundays. It's, this one has vertical spreads. These are credit spreads for, for income-oriented traders. So we're going to tell you to do iron condors, to sell credit spreads, and those kind of things. That goes out on Sunday. It's usually had two to three, in, two to three ideas. Earnings previews, these are only issued during the earnings season. And so when, I, when we have a very strong, good view upon an, of an earnings, we'll send a you know, whole note out and tell you exactly what we think about it. Quarterly outlook, our finest, finest research goes out once per quarter, telling you our top picks for the quarter. And so there, by the way, uh, I don't know, there's some books here. Or if not here, then you can go to the booth. And we got samples of like four to five books over there that you can take a look at. That's what a quarterly outlook looks like. And you'll see exactly how the research looks like, basically. All right? And then the ProTraders Tool Spreadsheet, which is a massive, massive, giant database that's available for you. It's got all kinds of information, IPOs, M&As, everything. All right? Here you go. Bonus trade idea. Actually, I'm going to go back. Now, let me ask you, ready for a bonus trade idea? There's two of them. I got two ideas for you to take home today. Again, 15 minutes before the market closes. Let's see if I can cover them fast enough. All right, first one, Edwards Life Sciences. We're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to follow the three-prong approach, fundamentals, technicals, and option activity. And then at the end of it, I'm going to tell you what the actual trade is. Anybody familiar here with Edwards Life Sciences? Wow, nobody? One. I saw one hand. Two. Edwards Life Sciences makes heart valves. It's a very important med tech with some leadership positions and some key TCT markets. Okay, and so uh, they have some competition from Boston Scientific as well as Medtronics is coming up, but they're still the absolute clear leader with their Sapien T products, with lots of products already approved by the FDA, selling very well in the market as well as in Europe. And they have new iterations also coming up, particularly in Europe. Fundamentals, technicals, option activity. Once again, fundamentals tell us what to buy, technicals tell us when to buy, and the option activity tell us how to buy. So we're going to look at all those three. Fundamentals, three things you need to know. The TCT conference is a very important one. It happens once a year. It's coming up on September 21st to 25th in San Diego. That's next week. This company will be presenting a lot of new information, data, and most of the time they use this conference to present long-term outlook on the TCT industry as well. So that may move the needle on the stock next week because they're going to probably talk about what their second half of 2018 or 2019 will look like. Strong European TAVR sales per management commentary, and I'll highlight that in just a moment, what that means. And lastly, multiple, multiple, at least four major product launches are coming up, late 2018, as well as in early 2019. Technicals, the stock pull back, form an inverse head and shoulder formation, and now starting to break out. I'll show that chart in a moment. An unusual option activity. Now, this is interesting because today... This was this morning, when I was doing final touches to this presentation, somebody bought 3,000 October 160 calls, and this was after yesterday, or in the last two days, I should say, they bought 2,000 of November 165 calls. So they are accumulating calls in this one for all week long, for the last three days, nonstop. Fundamentals. 
The company posted 12% growth in the second quarter, but according to the channel checks, the OUS market, which is the key, the key market, according to the channel checks, the growth is tracking around 17% year over year for this quarter, for the third quarter, which will be reported sometime in October. That's a sequential acceleration from going from Q2 to Q3, from 12% to 17%. And I think this will create the groundwork for the company for the stock appreciation from here. Okay, this is what you may hear from the TS at the TCT conference next week if they provide the outlook, financial outlook. If they don't, then you will just hear about it when they report the next earnings, which is sometime going to be in October. But the key message here is I'm seeing a sequential acceleration in growth rate from 12 to 17 percent, Q2 to Q3. That's what channel checks are showing. Second thing, in late 2018 and 2019, EU, EW will launch and see increasing momentum from several growth-enhancing products. Multiple launches are coming. Cardioban in European Union, Sapien 3, both in US and EU. Sapien is, by the way, a very, very good, strong selling product. There was Sapien, then there was Sapien 2, now Sapien 3 will be launching. Centra in Europe and Pascal also in Europe. Now take a look at the consensus, because fundamentals is not about just knowing what the company is doing, but also comparing it to consensus, because you want to make sure the consensus hasn't already baked in the information, otherwise there's no incentive. This is a chart from Bank of America as one example. Take a look at those two highlighted lines at the, on the right hand side, and you'll see the consensus estimating third and fourth quarter growth rate of 11.2 and 9.9%, when the channel checks are showing the growth rate could be 17%. And that's where the disconnect in the story comes into play. Because when they report earnings, and it's going to be much better than consensus, the stock is going to fly. Edward Life Sciences right here. From the TCT conference, there was one conference, a mini conference in June as well, in which one of the analysts from Stifel basically attended and they came back with this commentary. We spoke with four U.S. international cardiologists regarding recent TAVR volumes. Each of the four cardiologists expect 2018 TFR volume increase of at least 10 to 20% year over year. So when the consensus at 9.9% growth for fourth quarter, that's telling me why are you at 9.9% when these doctors are so bullish on the stock? Another reason why I think there's a disconnect in the story and the company will report better than consensus estimates. One doctor even said salivating to get his hands on it. I don't know what that means, but you guys are smart enough to figure that out. He wants these heart valves badly, basically, all right? Why the future looks so bright? Because, most importantly, there were two main products that were launched in Europe in early 2018, Cantera and Ultra. These are leading, leading products that are very, very successful in the United States. They have been selling in the United States already very strong. Now they were launched in Europe in the first quarter, and I believe they're gaining momentum gradually. So you're going to see those get reflected in the next two quarters report, and you're going to see those momentum basically get better and better. Here's a chart. Now the technicals. Now you know the fundamental bull case. Technicals. So here's a chart. It pulled back, formed an inverse head and shoulder formation, and now it's breaking out from the neckline resistance. So your first target on the stock is $155 per share. It's trading around what? $147 right now. That's your first target, the dotted line, $155 per share. You're going to put your stop at $139. Your first target is $155. But keep in mind, they're buying calls in November $165 and October $160. So let's go back to the chart. That dotted line where I put it at $155, that's why I said it's the first target because the bulls are buying calls that are out in November 165. They see this going much higher than 155. So there is your risk and reward balance. You put a hard stop at 139, you buy the calls or stock over here, and you look for at least 155 as your first target, and then see if it can go all the way to 160 plus. Here's the trade. Now, I don't want to buy speculative short-term front month calls. You can, but I don't like doing that. I like to give myself a little bit more time just to have it go in that direction and be comfortable with the volatility that comes in in the short term. So the trade idea here is to buy EW January 150, 170 call spread for $6.50 or less.
Now you guys can take your phones out and execute this trade 10 minutes to the, before the market closes. But that's the trade. Everybody got it? Ready for next one? Car Gurus. That's the next one. How many of you know this company, Car Gurus? Yeah, one, two, three, yeah, more than Edwards Life Sciences, so that's good. Okay, Car Gurus basically is a marketplace for buying and selling cars. It's an online marketplace, but it's not just that. It brings the dealerships and the buyers together through unique dashboard of software products and suites that optimizes the sales process, reduces costs for all parties, increases options for such as financing and all kinds of things. So it's basically a central portal that brings buyers and sellers together for buying and selling cars. It is really, it tries to help streamline the processes for the dealers. Fundamentals, technicals, unusual option activities, same exact three-prong approach. On the fundamental side, the stock is coming off a very strong quarter with guidance sharply raised, and I'll show you how strong the quarter was in just a moment. But on the forward-looking comments, what gets me excited is a second point there, which has to do with dealer display adoption. Uh, what does that mean? Now, this is something the company launched in March. So the last quarter was the first quarter. The second quarter was the first quarter when we saw full quarter of growth from this particular dashboard software product called dealer display and i believe it's only going to accelerate from here this we're only seeing one quarter so far from this from this particular product i think you have several more quarters of seeing a strong growth ahead of it an unusual option activity for the last three days somebody is gradually accumulating october 50 and 55 calls steadily non-stop let's dive into each of them one by one fundamentals so 40,000 network of U.S. dealerships that this company has, representing 7% of all used cars. That's how big this company is. Pretty good size, right? Pretty big network. This is the report, earnings that came out a couple of weeks ago. The second quarter revenue, I always focus, by the way, if you ever ask me what is the most important line item I ever focus on when an earnings report come out, for me, it's revenues. It's not EPS, because which can be managed through accounting gimmicks. It's not a lot of other lines. It's the revenues. And that revenue was 110 million versus 103. Estimate, that's a significant beat. Most importantly, look at the last line right there, or the second last line. The, the Q3 revenue growth guidance was 112 to 113 million versus 106 million estimate. That's a big beat versus consensus. And the average U.S. monthly unique visitors on the website went up by 33%. Fantastic quarter. And this is the most important thing. It's not just about getting more customers on their website, so unique number of visitors on the website going up. It's also about how much money you juice out of those each customer that comes in how much money you collect from the existing ones as well. Average annual revenue per subscriber dealer, subscribing dealer jumped 19% year over year. So they're able to juice more money out of each dealer that they have in their network as well. That tells you about how strong the moat is around the company. Not only are they able to increase the unique visitors on the website, but also increase the money they make from each dealer that comes to the network. This was the 10th consecutive quarter of high teens growth in AARST. Now, at the last line over there is the most important one. SEM Plus, that's the dashboard software that was released for dealers, used car dealership dealers, in March 23rd, 2018. So last quarter was the first quarter. Here's a great example. Focus on this comment over here because this is, tells you. One of the largest dealerships based in Colorado is by, it's called King Buick GMC and King Chevy Buick GMC. It's owned by Jared King, the general manager of King dealerships. One of the largest dealerships, and this is a comment from him exactly. He noted that when he switched to CarGuru's SEM Plus dashboard software, because of the performance of CarGuru's listing platform, King adds that SEM Plus has provided 100% increase in sales and leads for the King dealerships as compared to their prior SEM providers. 
This is a setting the background in place for many other dealerships to also adopt the SEM software product, essentially. Look at their growth rate, just speaks for itself in AARD, AARSD, and here's the stock. That stock spiked sharply higher. You see where the March 23rd, when that SEM Plus was launched, then it went into a soft patch, consolidating, and then earnings came out, stock sharply spiked higher, then pulled back and filled the gap. You see that post earning, there was a minor pullback, it filled the gap, and that pullback and gap fill provided another buying opportunity for the next leg higher in stock. So there's a technical study that is working in your favor. Higher highs and higher lows is what I expect in the stock from here, and that gap fill gave you the buying opportunity, so this is the new leg higher. Here's the option activity that we are seeing in October 55 calls for the last three days. Non-stop. They came in on Tuesday, then on Wednesday, then on Thursday, and then a little bit more this morning. Every day they're coming and they're gradually accumulating 50 and 55 calls in the stock. Here's a trade. Buy February 55 calls for $5.20 or less. Fundamentals, technicals, and option activity. Fundamentals tell us what to buy. Technicals tell us when to buy. Option activity tell us how to buy. There you go. That's your case right there. So the trade advisory is to buy February 55 calls for $5.20. Again, I'm buying leap calls over here, giving a bit more time. There could be a volatile moment coming maybe, perhaps around midterm elections. I do not know how it's going to all turn out. Okay, this is also weak seasonality period right now. So why not just give ourselves a little bit more time, go out to February, and be comfortably positioned in that particular trade. Last two slides. So this is uh, what we offer on the website. We have two kinds of subscription services. The light version is $100 per month or $99 per month, basically. And the pro version is $299 per month. The biggest difference between the two, the pro version is comes with a chat room where you will find me every day from 8 to 4. All right. Also comes with webinars. Those are the two main differences. And uh, the light version does not come with those two options. Otherwise, most of their options, most of their features are about the same. Okay? So those are the two biggest differences between them. And the deal that I'm offering here for just this money show is try out the entire website for four weeks. Entire website. That's a pro version we're talking about here for just 10 bucks. These are U.S. dollars, by the way. I'm talking about not Canadian dollars. Okay? We're a U.S.-based company. So $9.99 US, okay? So try the entire website for four-week trial. Cancel any time, no obligation. After trial, if you wish to stay, use a 10% discount to sign up, whether it's light or pro, your choice. Whether you go with the $99 per month or $299 per month, go to that website and type in that code, and then you can get your 10% off the monthly price, whichever you decide to stay with. Okay, that was everything. Questions? Yes? That's a good question. I often get asked that question too. So was it fundamentals that led me into a trade or technicals or the unusual option activity? Which part of it comes first, right? The simple answer is, any of them. Often, we see an unusual option activity pick up. We haven't discovered this stock yet, or we haven't researched this stock yet, but that will become the trigger for us to go research it, find out what's going on, and if you like the story, then we'll jump into it. Sometimes, we'll be reading a research report from, let's say, Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, and we'll spot something that really attracts our view on the fundamental side. That will become the starting point for us. So it, it really comes from any angles. But the most important thing is not the starting point. The most important thing, the advisory only goes out to clients when all three of them come together in a nice package. There's a little, thanks for a great question. There's a little hat for you. More questions? Yeah. Yep. You may not know this, I don't know how many know this, but the e-commerce of Walmart is growing at twice the rate of Amazon. 
Amazon was certainly the first comer, and Walmart came in much, much, much later. No cushion. But then Walmart got very aggressive with jet acquisition and redoing their website, you know, shipping, uh, and all of that stuff. But the growth rate of the e-commerce platform, I'm talking about e-commerce, not brick and mortar for Walmart in America, is almost 45, 50% versus Amazon maintaining it around 24, 25%. It's twice the rate of Amazon. That's the first thing. And second thing is that Walmart now has a complete monopoly in India after they spent $16 billion to outbid Amazon to acquire Flipkart. That is the next major e-commerce market that Amazon does not have a presence in. Amazon was trying to get in there very, very fast and very quickly and just couldn't work out for those guys. Well, Walmart did. Good question. Any questions? Oh, you mean the vertical versus straight? It's about simply reducing the cost. You see, first of all, let me put it this way. In, 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 uh, whenever I'm going, the farther I go out in the option chain, timing-wise, the farther I go out in the option chain is a rule of thumb for myself and what I advise to all the clients, the more the chances I'm going to go with just straight calls. It makes no sense at all to me whatsoever. I've been doing this long enough to know this how options work, how the gammas move, how the deltas move, and all of that, Greeks and everything, that the longer you will go out in the time frame in the option chain, the better you will be just going with the straight calls rather than vertical spreads because you're getting cheap volatility and you will get a substantial amount of move basically going to your favor rather than cutting your upside. Now, that's part of the reason. One is a January trade and one is a February trade. And the second reason is simply for the fact that I wanted to reduce the cost. Usually, I do not like paying more than 5 or 6% of the underlying for buying an option trade. You know, if I come in here and tell you that, hey, there's a $30 stock, but you should buy calls on it for 5 bucks, that's ridiculous. Okay, why would I spend 15% of the underlying to recommend you buy calls on a $30 stock? You're much better off just buying the stock themselves. You know, you're re increasing a break-even point. So when calls are bid up quite a bit and they're expensive, I want to reduce them by using spreads to spend generally no more than 5 or 6% of the underlying to make a directional bet. Good question. Two more questions and then we go. They're going to kick me out at some point. Yes. Sell? Yes, of course. So at some point, that trade is going to work as expected, and it's going both of those, and they would have run their course, or the catalyst would have come and gone, or in worst-case scenario, they would not have worked according to expectation. Maybe this TCT conference comes, and they, you know, they come out and reduce their guidance for some reason or whatnot. Regardless, whenever the catalyst is over or the trade has run its course, we'll send a trade advisory out and tell you it's time to go. Thank you for that question. You get ahead, too. One last question. Yes. For sell? Interesting question. You know, so then you would own both calls and puts at that particular time, right? You've been betting on it. Likely answer is no. We have never done it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're creating a straddle for yourself, which sharply increases the break-even point on either side of making the money. There's nothing wrong with that, to be honest with you, but it comes down to knowing where the implied volatilities are. If you're going to expect me, yeah. Right, and that works perfectly. The only thing I will caution you on that part is that one of the most important elements that drives how much a premium is an, is an option worth is based on when you compare the implied volatility of the stock to historic volatility. And the higher the gap, the more, the, the, the more expensive the option is going to be. I caution people spending too much money on an option without fully understanding what is the relationship between implied volatility and historic volatility. 
it's perfectly fine, you're saying, for a hedging purposes when you can just buy put by using some of the premiums you have made on calls. But if the premium is bid up on those puts based on, you know, where the implied volatility is, then you're overpaying. By the way, let me just give you, for example, one example. You know Tilray, the cannabis stock? Take a look at how, how expensive the puts are on Tilray versus call options. All right, we're going to stop right here. Thank you, everybody, for coming. If you have any more questions, we got a booth in the main hall. Come and see me over there. And anything you'd like. We also have some, uh, some of the research samples, whatnot, if you want to take a look at and understand. So thank you, everybody.